Many information technology professionals often ask, what the fuck is GRC? And I don't mean getting ridiculed constantly. We're talking about governance, risk, and compliance. Whether you're just starting out in IT or you've been involved in IT for some time, you're probably going to hear about GRC. Now, I'm no expert in GRC, but I can tell you that governance is going to align with something like the rules or something, I think, and risk is going to be along the lines of things that are going wrong, and compliance falls along the lines of, well, honestly, compliance just sounds like paperwork, right? But I'm not the expert. And I thought that you guys should really know about GRC because it's something that you're going to run across. And if you're trying to get into IT, it can be an opportunity for you, but I'm not the expert. So today I'm bringing the expert in, Dr. Jerry Osier from Simply Cyber, who is the GRC master, if you will. Welcome, Jerry, to the channel. I appreciate you being here. What the heck is GRC? Let, tell me all about it. Yeah, thanks, Zach. Thanks for having me on. I love GRC. I love cybersecurity. So GRC gets a bum rap because a lot of people don't understand it. But essentially, as you pointed out, it is governance, risk, and compliance. And essentially what this means is it helps set the tone for how an organization is going to approach cybersecurity. How much money are they going to spend on it? How many people are they going to put on it? Where does it sit in the stack of importance and priorities? And because GRC exists, it interfaces with the business and it allows us to purchase SIMs and tools for the security operations center or go get the right amount of cyber insurance. That's what it's all about. Governance is what are the rules of what we're doing in here? Compliance is are we agreeing with those external requirements that we have? And risk, arguably the most important one, is around how do we manage this infinite amount of risk and problems with a finite amount of money, time, and people to bring the risk down to something that is acceptable. Okay, so I guess that's a little bit more of what GRC is and what it does, but how is it actually applied in the real world? Like, where are you going to see this and, and how do we actually see it applied? So the most obvious part that anyone would see it, whether they're in IT, cyber, or marketing or whatever, is through end user awareness training. And this is essentially trying to reduce the risk of human issue on you know installing things that you shouldn't, having terrible passwords, clicking on things you shouldn't. There really is a lot of value in managing risk at that point because technical controls are phenomenal, but if a human who has access to resources and is holding the phone falls for something, it's going to compromise the organization and data and systems and such. So end user awareness training is definitely something that GRC is responsible for. Again, interfacing with the business, also risk management. So this is around actually making compelling cases to the business for money or for policy. So are people allowed to use AI at work? That would be a GRC related discussion. Are we going to require our customers to use multi-factor authentication to log into our application? This is a huge decision because it will significantly reduce risk, but it introduces burden and friction to our customers, which might result in them leaving and cost money to us as a business. So these are the conversations. These are the thoughts of what a GRC professional does. And frankly, this is why a CISO, the one who's most responsible for information security, actually falls under that GRC banner. All right, so if somebody wanted a job in GRC, are there like specific roles that they should look for? Or are there any entry level roles? Are they just mid-level roles? What kind of employment opportunities does somebody have if they wanna learn more about GRC and go down that route? I love this question. I think that GRC analyst roles are a wonderful entry level point into cybersecurity. Now, just a quick qualifier, entry level just means first job or junior role in cybersecurity. You still need some prerequisite knowledge. Now, GRC analyst as a junior role typically is the less technical of all the junior roles in cybersecurity that the expectation of technical acumen would require. Having said that, you still need to be able to say if an engineer is lying to you or telling you something that doesn't make sense. You also need technical acumen to understand, like when you're coming up with ideas on how to reduce risk or auditing something appropriately, does it make sense that you know this is an internet facing asset and you can get to an internal asset via the network? I, I don't know, but these are the things. As far as junior roles go, one of the best ones that you could possibly look for is auditor. So that compliance function 
typically requires audit. Now, whether you're getting a business ready for an external audit or you are that external auditor, the reason it's a wonderful junior level role is because what you're auditing it against is usually very well documented and there's either a yes or no. Now, again, there are gradients and you get into the nuances of the role, but for the most part, it's like, hey, auditor, need you to fly here, need you to talk to these people, need you to ask them these questions and bring the results back. So there isn't a lot of you know, opportunity for you to go off the reservation and need to have all sorts of pre-existing knowledge. That's phenomenal. And to couple that, in the United States at least, there's new regulation coming out around something called CMMC. And what this basically is requiring is anyone that wants to do business with the defense industrial base, which is a lot of businesses working with the Federal Department of Defense and the government, is going to be required to comply with a certain set of controls. Now, how do you comply with those controls? Well, you hire someone to implement them and get you ready, or you hire someone to also do an audit so you can get that piece of paper that says you're compliant and now you can bid on contracts. And that is where money is, And that's a motivator for businesses to want to hire people into those roles. So I'm not the smartest cookie by any means. And GRC is definitely not something I'm an expert in, but from my understanding of all of this, help desk technicians enforcing password policies would fall along the lines of compliance, right? So help desk employees resetting passwords and dealing with that, I wouldn't necessarily align it with compliance. Compliance is really ensuring that you and your organization are complying with some type of standard or external regulation or requirement. So if the law says you have to do this, compliance makes sure that you are doing this. A great example is the payment card industry. If you want to take credit cards at your business, which a lot of retail organizations want to, the Visa, MasterCard, American Express, they've all gotten together and agreed. If you want to take credit cards, you have to do these things. And it's called Payment Card Industry, PCI or PCI DSS. And this is a standard that if you are not complying with, you can take credit cards. And again, it gets right back to the business and losing money because you can't take those credit card transactions anymore. So what I would say is the help desk technician resetting the password is actually an operational role that is executing on the vision and the policy that the GRC group of the information security team has dictated and outlined as a requirement at the organization to manage risk. Sysadmins reviewing patch notes could fall along the lines of like risk. Also sysadmins uh, reviewing patch notes that is kind of around risk. The fact that they're taking notes as they're patching, now we're talking about risk management because when you are patching systems, you're you're taking away vulnerabilities. And this is one of those really interesting elements where a GRC person would also be doing vulnerability assessment and finding where all the bad is in their environment. But the GRC person isn't the one who's gonna twist the wrench, push the button, apply the patch, do whatever it is that needs to fix the machine or the endpoint to make it less insecure. That's IT's job. And again, it's all about relationships and why the GRC function of the information security office needs to partner with the business to achieve its goals. IT managers choosing frameworks, that's governance? So an IT manager choosing a framework, this is wonderful. I would put that in governance, although typically the information security office would be the one selecting the framework because it would be a security framework. Now, you can get into things around ITIL and and IT frameworks and such like that, but governance is definitely uh, around frameworks. You nailed that one, Zach. The framework is going to give you that holistic big picture on where all your opportunities are to reduce risk and how to go about doing them. That way, when you're executing a multi-year plan, you could say, all right, our biggest risks are right here. Let's get this sorted out. But then like, let's make sure that the thing we want to do in six months, 12 months, 18 months, all lines up and is orchestrated nicely. Because again, you've got to think about multi-year licensing and you've got to think about straight cash, homie. How much is it going to cost to get from here to there? And do we have the resources and budget from the business? All right, let's apply this more to a realistic role. Like, Let's say that we're somebody working in a hospital. How would GRC show up in a hospital? In healthcare. So I worked in healthcare for a number of years, and I'll just tell you right off the rip, that is a phenomenal environment to work on cybersecurity because you are dealing with all sorts of specialized equipment, all sports of different kinds of end users, like clinical care staff with their own language, just like we in IT have our own language. 
the way that cybersecurity, specifically GRC, absolutely shows up in healthcare, first and foremost would be around HIPAA. Now, HIPAA is a federal regulation around protecting healthcare information, and that could be like your diagnosis or your medical treatment or whatever. We need to protect that. So you need to comply with that or else you lose or could get fined federally from the Department of Health and Human Services. So right there, that's a a compliance element. Also in healthcare, when you're dealing with risk reduction and governance, you are talking about, hey, listen, we need to protect all these assets, all this data. But at the same time, you are faced with a challenge of patient safety and clinical care operations needing to operate 24-7. No one can walk into an emergency room and be like, I need help now. And you're like, sorry, we're in the middle of a two-hour maintenance window. You'll have to come back. That absolutely isn't acceptable. So around dealing with the risk of that. Now we're talking about high availability systems, right? And that is one of those decisions where you're like, all right, we have a risk. How do we manage it? We need to patch our systems, but how do we patch the systems without downtime? Oh, we have to have high availability. So we have to have two versions of the systems and run them in parallel. So one of them can be patched while the other one's providing service. This is a great example of where you can see multiple factors of GRC appear inside of a healthcare setting. All right, so I think we got a really good understanding of GRC, and I really appreciate you taking the time to share that with us, Jerry. But what if somebody wants to learn more about GRC? What are the best resources that they can utilize to go down this path and find success? Thanks to the question, Zach. Now, an easy answer is to go look at NIST Special Publications 800 series. This is a large library of documentation that covers pretty much every facet of approaching cybersecurity for an organization. The problem is you can do that, but unfortunately, it is very dense and can be very difficult to consume and really digest for knowledge and skills. Now, personally, I'm a huge GRC advocate, so I I literally launched Simply Cyber Academy me with the intent of helping people understand how to do GRC. Now, my flagship course that has helped tens of thousands of people is the GRC Analyst Masterclass. But I've also got some other GRC resources in there for people who are just kind of exploring to see it even if they want. Number one I want to point out is the GRC Foundations for Modern Cybersecurity. This is a mini course, but basically, if you go through it, it'll tell you exactly what GRC is at great length, and it asks some behavioral questions to figure out if you'd actually enjoy the work, because there's some people that if you got into it, you'd absolutely want to rip your hair out because it's not as challenging or it doesn't get into the areas of cybersecurity that you want. So really, those are some resources that I would recommend, of course, at the Daily Cyber Threat Brief, which is a morning show that I do every single morning over on Simply Cyber. You are required to stay current on industry in cybersecurity because you can't educate the business on what to protect. You can't tell IT what needs to be patched right now unless you're staying current. And because of that, that's why I do that daily show every single day. And that's just live streamed on YouTube and accessible to everyone. Yeah, I totally wrote Jerry into that one. I know that he has the Simply Cyber Academy and I cannot recommend that enough. If you are looking to learn more about GRC, please check out Simply Cyber Academy. They have more than just GRC there. But if you are looking to go down that route, then Jerry, is probably honestly the expert when it comes to governance, risk, and compliance. So be sure to check that out and be sure to send a thank you to him and go check out the Simply Cyber channel if you haven't yet, because again, Jerry and the entire Simply Cyber community is absolutely amazing. So thank you again, and I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, take it easy.